Good afternoon from Athens, Greece. My name is Victoria Vasiliadou and I'm a cardiovascular perfusionist at 41 General Military Hospital of Athens at the Joint Corps Armed Forces Cardiac Surgery Department. I'm honored today uh, to be invited to present in this exceptional perfusion conference that we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of THI School of Perfusion Technology. I want to express for one more time my gratitude to Mr. Crane and all my instructors during my education. Today, I'm going to present to you a case report of mitral valve replacement for infective endocarditis with the use of cytokine absorption filter during cardiopulmonary bypass. Infective endocarditis, also called, called bacterial endocarditis, is an infection caused by bacteria that enter the bloodstream and settle in the heart lining a heart valve or a blood vessel. It's an uncommon disease with a yearly incidence 3 to 10 per 100,000 people. The causes and epidemiology of the disease have evolved in recent decades with a doubling of the average patient age and an increased prevalence in patients with indwelling cardiac devices. The microbiology of the disease has also changed and staphylococci, most often associated with healthcare conduct and invasive procedures, have overtaken streptococci as the most common cause of the disease. Although novel diagnostic and therapeutic uh, strategies have emerged, one year mortality has not improved and remains at 30%, which is worse than for many cancers. There are two forms of infective endocarditis, the acute, which develops abruptly and progresses suddenly in a few days, with high fever, fast heart rate, fatigue, rapid and extensive heart valve damage, and the subacute, which develops slowly with fatigue, mild fever, weight loss, sweating, and low red blood count. There are local consequences, myocardial abscesses with tissue destruction and sometimes conduction system abnormalities, usually with low septal abscesses. The sudden severe valvular regurgitation will cause heart failure and death and our is due to contiguous spread of infection. The systemic consequences are due to embolization of infected material from the heart valve. There are immune mediated phenomena, primarily in chronic infection. The right sided lesions typically produce septic pulmonary emboli, and then left sided lesions may embolize to any tissue, particularly kidney, spleen, and central nervous system. These patients are at high risk for developing systemic inflammatory response and septic shock as a result of the bacteria spread out from valve vegetations. The surgery of valve repair or valve replacement is indicated in patients with heart failure, particularly those with prosthetic valve, pulmonary edema, cardiogenic shock, with uncontrolled infection, at risk of embolism from large vegetation or recurrent emboli. The timing of surgery requires experienced clinical judgment. If heart failure caused by a correctable lesion is worsening, particularly when the organism is Staphylococcus aureus or a fungus, surgery may be required after only 24 to 72 hours of antimicrobial therapy. The surgical procedure together with cardiopulmonary bypass in a patient with an underlying infective endocarditis disease represent an intervention with increased risks. The combination of surgical trauma, the bacteria spread out and artificial cardiopulmonary bypass surface results in a release of key inflammatory mediators such as tumor necrosis factor A, interleukin six, eight and 10, this may finally lead to an overshooting of the systemic hyperinflammatory state, frequently resulting in hemodynamic instability and induce organ dysfunction, such as respiratory failure, acute kidney injury, and cognitive dysfunction. Another factor that may increase the risk of developing severe SIRS postoperatively is the prolonged CPB surgery. Postoperative therapeutic management of these patients includes an appropriate and effective therapy in combination with therapeutic approaches maintaining vital organ function. 
Since inflammatory mediators are the key triggers of inflammation and uh, post-cardiopulmonary bypass series, intra- or post-operative removal of such mediators with a cytokine absorber has previously been described as a useful approach to control these hyperinflammatory processes to restore immune homeostasis and potentially prevent post-CPB series and multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. Currently, there are devices used as an adjunctive treatment to standard therapy in subjects suffering from SIRS, severe sepsis or septic shock to support the removal of cytokines as well as other inflammatory mediators via direct whole blood hemoabsorption. This is a polymer bead-based cytokine hemoabsorption cartridge approved in Europe. It can be used in combination with conventional hemodialysis machines or with cardiopulmonary bypass systems. Our case report now, uh, a 49-year-old Greek, previously healthy female, mother of two, was presented in the emergency unit of a peripheral hospital with fever, temperature 37.8 degrees Celsius, and shortness of breath for one day. On uh, admission, her vital parameters were respiratory rate 18 per minute, temperature 37.8 degrees Celsius, heart rate 105 per minute, blood pressures 95 to 50. Her systemic physical examination revealed no significant abnormalities. The two-dimension echocardiography that was performed found normal left ventricular function with ejection fraction 60%, severe pulmonary artery hypertension with severe mitral regurgitation with posterior leaflet vegetations. The blood cultures revealed proteus mirabilis and a triple antibiotic therapy with vancomycin, ceftriaxone, and gendamicin was started. At that time, the patient already required moderate norepi support for hemodynamic stabilization. In the following days, it was intubated due to development of severe non-compensated pulmonary edema, while her temperature ranged between 39, 39 to 40 degrees of Celsius. After her hemodynamic stabilization, the patient was transferred to our hospital. Following the consultant meeting, the surgical treatment was decided. The patient was scheduled for coronary angiography. However, in the meantime, she had suffered an acute myocardial infarction. The coronary angiography revealed an obstructed small abuse marginal branch without other abnormalities. Due to progressive hemodynamic instability, no rapid support was supplemented by vasopressin and dibutamine administration, under which blood pressure could be kept stable. Additionally, an intraortic balloon pump was inserted to support and improve preoperative hemodynamic condition. The routine blood uh, evaluation revealed anemia, leukocytosis, as well as elevated bilirubin, presepsin, serpe, and the troponin T was high to 27,000 nanograms per liter. During the following days, the antibiotic regimen was, cha was changed to a 6 please seam Cosixin of uh, six uh, antibiotics. The serum creatinine levels were increased to 2.5 milligrams per DL, confirming the diagnosis of acute kidney injury that was treated with continuous intravenous infusion of furosemide and not uh, continuous renal replacement therapy. The blood cultures were negative, but temperature remained at 39 degrees of Celsius. For surgery, troponin levels were required to be below 5,000 uh, nanograms per liter. The surgery was performed on the 13th day of hospitalization and on the seventh day postmyocardial infarction. A mitral valve replacement procedure using a heart-lung machine that was run in conjunction with hemoabsorption therapy was decided by the surgery team. The reason for using a cytokine absorption filter, it was that she was a highly septic post-infarction patient at risk of an additional episode of cytokine storm as a result of the surgical procedure. The cytokine absorber was used intraoperatively in conjunction with the cardiopulmonary bypass circuit. 
The duration of hemoabsorption therapy was 120 minutes during the whole CPB time. The duration of surgery was three hours. Uh, we use heparin of uh, 22,000 uh, units and the activated clotted time remained over 513 uh, seconds with no addition on heparin. We transfused three units of red blood cells. The results of uh, the interop treatment was hemodynamic stability during cardiopulmonary bypass with mean arterial pressure over 60. The lactate level remained under 3.1 millimoles per liter and the urine output was over 50 ml per hour. The patient needed low inotropic support immediately after bypass. Immediately after the successful mitral valve replacement, the hemodynamic condition of the patient was stable. However, in the ICU, she gradually developed a fever of 39.5 to 40.5 degrees of Celsius in the early post-op period, and again required increasing of uh, hemodynamic support, including norepi, epinephrine, vasopressin, dobutamine, methane blue, along with the intraortic balloon pump. Uh, despite this, the urine output and lactate levels were within their normal range. In this near disastrous condition, continuous renal replacement therapy was started, which however proved ineffective. And uh, a cy uh, cytokine absorber was additionally integrated in the, to the CRT circuit one day later on the third post-op day. That was treatment two that lasted for 40 hours. Following discontinuation of the combined CRT and um, hemoabsorption therapy, on the fifth post-op day, the hemodynamic condition of the patient again deteriorated dramatically with metabolic acidosis and increasing requirements of inotropic and vasopressor support. Consequently, she was reconnected to the CRT with hemoabsorption therapy a few hours later. The third treatment lasted 48 hours. The result of post-op treatment with a cytokine filter was a stabilization in uh, the hemodynamics of the patient a drastic decrease in inotropic and visopressor support during both treatment cycles, a decrease in inflammatory mediator levels, a cessation of fever as a result of combined dialysis and cytokine hemoabsorption therapy, and the plasma lactate concentrations improved and stabilized a level uh, lower of uh, two, two millimole per liter. The intraortic balloon pump was removed on the third post-op day. The combined CRT with hemoabsorption therapy was finally stopped on post-operative day seven. The patient still required minimum inotropic support until day 11, while the lactate level was already within the normal range from post-operative day seven. Total postoperative transfusion volume was eight units of packed red blood cells, 10 units of platelet concentrates, and four fresh frozen plasma. A tracheostomy was performed on the seventh post-op day. The cultures of the valvular tissue revealed that the responsible microbial specimen was Coxiella burnetti. The patient developed a critical illness polyneuropathy Following a prolonged postoperative course, he was finally discharged from hospital on the 50th postoperative day in a good clinical condition. Due to the findings reported in literature, this was the first case where the cytokine absorption filter was used in a case of infective endocarditis along with septic shock and myocardial infarction. The treatment resulted in hemodynamic stabilization control of the inflammatory response, and a normalization of metabolic parameters. Generally, the acute surgical treatment of infective endocarditis carries a high risk of post-op mortality. Most complications are linked to uncontrolled sepsis and inflammatory processes. The cytokine hemoabsorption is an extracorporeal technique which has benefits reported 
in hemodynamic stability and reduction of inflammatory response. After a systematic literature review that was conducted on PubMed with the keyword cytokine absorption, cardiac surgery, and effective endocarditis, we found six articles, uh, a randomized control trial, a case series comparative study, a retrospective single center study, a prospective multi-center RCT, and a case report, except from the retrospective study by Center that found no significant uh, difference in hemodynamic stability and outcomes for the hemoabsorption group. The rest of the studies presented positive patient outcomes with the use of a cytokine absorber filter during bypass and post-op when integrated in the CRT in an ECMO or a CPB circuit. Based on limited evidence, the use of a cytokine absorption filter during cardiopulmonary bypass and in conjunction with CRT in the ICU is a safe technique and well-tolerated by the patient with no device-related adverse events during or after the treatment sessions. It helps with the reduction of cytokine levels, contributing to better patient outcomes when a cytokine storm is released. Of course, more randomized uh, trials are needed to prove the efficacy of uh, cytokine absorption filters used in reducing cytokines in the bloodstream of the patients. Many studies are already running in Europe right now, especially in COVID patients requiring ECMO, but also in cases where emergent cardiac surgery is required for the reduction of the anticoagulant concentration. The results of these trials are needed to confirm that the use of the filter can reduce the length of stay in the ICU and total hospital stay. Although the filter has an initial upfront cost, this was proven to be cost effective due to the potential health resource savings on both short and long term projections. Thank you for your attention.